Shoshong port system represents the next generation in vascular access technology. By combining the latest advances in catheter and port design along with a superior insertion technique. The catheter superiority centers around the patented Groshong three-way valve, located in the rounded radiopaque tip. The Groshong valve provides patient safety by virtually eliminating the risk of air embolism and blood reflux, as well as heparin use. This is accomplished by the valve remaining closed when not in use, yet opening to allow aspiration or infusion. The valve remains closed between a range of minus 7 to plus 80 millimeters of mercury. The Groshong 8 French port catheter is constructed of radiopaque silicone rubber and has a rounded tip, designed to reduce the risk of vessel erosion and or cardiac tamponade. Depth markings make insertion easier. The catheter can be cut to length and the thin wall design provides for high flow rates. The port itself offers these technological advancements. Lightweight titanium construction, providing biocompatibility and usability with MRI. Smooth geometric curves both inside and out reduce the risk of exterior tissue pressure abrasions and interior fluid pooling locations. The septum is a domed silicone rubber material with superior needle retention characteristics the largest target area is combined with the smallest port size. The titanium septum ring is palpable, yet small enough to reduce the risk of needle damage. The Groshong port is a post-insertion assembled system, allowing tip-first placement, ensuring catheter to patient fit. In laboratory testing, the assembled port connection stood up to all tests without disconnecting. As indicated earlier, another advantage of the Groshong port system is the insertion technique. Its advantages are the unique tunneling trocar, which simplifies tunnel creation and reduces tissue trauma. The post-attached connection system, which eases insertion. And the flush-through stylet, which allows fast, easy use. The Groshong port system is designed to be used when a patient requires infusion therapy or blood sampling and can be placed in any of the normal placement locations. The Groshong port system is primarily designed for percutaneous catheter placement but can be used for either cut down or percutaneous techniques. The insertion tray contains the basic items needed for the percutaneous placement technique. The venous port system catheter is generally inserted into the jugular or subclavian veins. A knowledge of the anatomy and landmarks as well as the implantation technique is essential for successful placement. The patient is prepped, draped, and anesthetized using normal hospital protocol. For best results, the port pocket location as well as the catheter route should be predetermined and marked. The port pocket should be placed so that the port rests on an underlying bony structure and patient mobility is not compromised. Attach the syringe directly to the stylet hub and flush the catheter leaving its saline locked. After placing the patient in the Trendelenburg position, use the supplied 18 gauge by 2.5 needle and syringe. Enter the vein and obtain blood return. Remove the syringe and insert the J-tipped guide wire through the introducer needle using the blue straightener to straighten the J. X-ray should be used to confirm guide wire placement. In order to avoid catheter pinch off, care must be taken not to place the catheter too medially into the angle between the clavicle and first rib. If placement is proper, Remove the introducer needle, leaving the guide wire in place. After making a four to five centimeter long incision, develop a port pocket by using blunt dissection. Take care not to place the incision line directly over the eventual site of the port location. Do not make the port pocket larger than the port base. 
Do not bury the port too deeply. Five to six millimeters is usually adequate. Obese patients may require some fat excision for proper placement. A finger can be used to create a subcutaneous space for the port stem. Pack the port pocket with gauze. Make a small two centimeter incision at the selected vascular access site. Advance the dilator and sheath over the guide wire into the vein. After removing the guide wire and dilator, pass the port catheter through the split sheath into the vein. Confirm catheter placement using x-ray. The catheter tip should be placed in the superior vena cava, about three centimeters proximal to the junction with the right atrium or roughly between the aortic arch and the right posterior seventh rib, or in essence, between the right posterior fifth and sixth ribs. Withdraw the split sheath and grasping both handles, peel the handles apart, leaving the catheter in place. Make sure the catheter is not dislodged from the vessel as the sheath is removed. Insert the trocar subcutaneously part way along the tunnel track. Remove the stylet, taking care the catheter is not withdrawn from the vessel, and then slide the catheter onto the trocar end. Pass the trocar and attached catheter through the subcutaneous tunnel into the port pocket after removing the packing gauze. Remove any kinks or slack in the catheter by checking the track and insertion site. Cut the catheter from the trocar at a right angle. After measuring the needed catheter length, cut it. When measuring, remember that the port fits up inside the pocket. The outlet stem length, along with any anticipated catheter manipulation, must be taken into account. Using the straight, non-coring needle provided, flush the port, holding the outlet stem upward, making certain all air is flushed out. Leave it saline locked. Slide the locking sleeve mechanism back up on the catheter. Slide the catheter onto the port outlet stem until it abuts to the port housing. Take care not to kink the tubing. Sometimes gauze provides superior grip. If the assembly doesn't work and the outlet stem over sleeve is damaged, discard the port and use a new one. To complete the connection assembly, slide the locking sleeve mechanism up onto the outlet stem and catheter until it abuts to the port housing. Assembly is eased if the locking sleeve is pushed from behind. It is important that the assembly technique is well understood. We will now review the procedure. Slide the locking sleeve onto the catheter. Slide the catheter onto the outlet stem until it abuts to the port housing. Slide the locking sleeve over the catheter and outlet stem, making certain it abuts to the port housing. Insert the port and assembled catheter into the port pocket using the previously created space. Care must be taken not to fold or kink the catheter back on itself or under the port base. Using four non-absorbable sutures, anchor the port in place. Using the non-coring needle provided, withdraw blood and flush the system with 20 cc saline, leaving it saline locked. A final confirmation x-ray should be performed. Close the port pocket site. The site should be dressed appropriately. Close and dress the vascular access site. The routine flushing protocol for the Groshong port system is 5 cc's every 30 days when the port is not in use or after consecutive medication doses. 20 cc's after blood draws, medication, or TPN infusion.